Now then, welcome back to another episode of Agrarian Skies 2. How are you? How you doing? What you up to? <laughs> welcome back. Uh, behind me, over here, we have the upgraded, updated version of my cobble gen system to make bedrockium. Um, I upgraded the warp item ducts. Pretty cheap, really, considering. Uh, there's just a few enderium, which is easy enough to make once you get to uh, enderman farm level. And these things have been fully upgraded so that they're kicking out a stack of cobble every process. Which is awesome. And then we're instantaneously travelling items across. Uh, I don't know if these servos are actually making that much of a difference, but they do move 64 items into the pipe as fast as possible. I did find before that it wasn't ejecting 64 at a time, it was making 64, but then this causes them to take all 64, put it into the pipe, which instantaneously moves it on to the best location. And the best location uh, is not this power output thing, but that doesn't receive energy, so that should be okay. Um, I've added an extra cyclic assembler, so there's two cyclic assemblers working all the time with all that cobble coming in so they get approximately five stacks each per process uh, and then process them very very quickly as well as you can see both of them working very very quickly indeed i had a bit of a backlog when there was just one so i put two in and now it's working nicely and that should give compressed cobblestone really quickly into this cyclic assembler which just is just going round the clock round and round and round you can't even keep up with it I don't know how many it's making per tick, but it's making a lot. And then the double compressed is fairly quick. Like, yeah, gets to nine fairly quickly, clears out. Not bad at all. But instead of changing the uh, double compressed, I took away the cyclic assembler, which was going to turn double into triple. And I've put in one of these auto packages to see how that works better. Uh, setting it in three by three mode so that I could cycle any of these remaining... Uh, cobblestone compressions back I th figured it's starting to get it's starting to slow down here so we're gonna get one a second maybe at the at a sort of like a a limit there one a second from this setup so if I was gonna then pass it down a line I'd have a lot of machines doing nothing whereas if I've got an auto packer uh, the auto packer takes items from the left chest and when there's nine It'll take those and package them in the 3x3, like that, there we go. And then it'll put the output into this side. So as you can see, i got 24, uh, 21 quadruple. And all I have to do then is put these guys back into this chest. And uh, yeah, something like that. Quadruple in there, like that, yeah, there we go. And it will package those up quickly as well and send those over. So if I really wanted to go to the maximum, uh, I would then just sort of filter across and back into this chest. So this chest would feed back into that chest until eventually there was nothing this auto packager could do. And I'd be left in this chest with whatever bazillion compressions there are. But we don't need all that. We needed four quadruple and four triple so that gets us what we need for the one big drachium ingot uh, all the rest is just bonus material and until i found a use for it i'm just going to leave it to run because it doesn't seem to lag out much around the place it doesn't re really reduce my frame rate by too much it doesn't feel well maybe you can tell tell a little bit better than i can because of the recording software and stuff but it seems okay seems okay uh let's have a quick sleep Alrighty, so now I need to switch this out and make what? Uh, energy nodes. That was it. I'm going to make some energy nodes and then make a hyper energy node. So I need four energy nodes. I like this. Do it, do it. This will make the four transfer energy nodes. Then I'll take the bedrock ingot, which keeps giving me a slowness effect. Uh, and put all four of those in here as well. And then we can put eight colony generators around one of those. And away we go. We've completed another quest. Fairly simple. Uh, takes a lot of work to get to Bedrockium, but if you've got the resources, you can soon make those. And these culinary generators, they took a fair bit of resources as well, so it's not an easy feat to sort it out. But it is the final quest. 
in the quest book for the power generation uh, and the culinary generator because I've been working on this I've been thinking about food and I don't need the power but I was thinking well I'm gonna have this culinary generator what should I do with it what would I do with it if I didn't have a big reactor so I've been messing around with all the food stuffs and with all the food stuffs I figured uh, well why not go overboard because I'm I've always wanted to do something with applied energistics and uh, Pam's harvest craft I've always wanted to do something like that so why not Whoop. So why not make something big out of it? So I've been doing a little bit of work over here. Uh, you, oh, you're joking. You are joking. No, you're not joking, are you? <laughs> you can see what's happened, I think. I think you can see what's happened. The uh, harvesters are running a little bit close to leaves touching leaves somewhere down the line. So I, I'm guessing this one here figured it found a leaf block and ended up clearing out this whole corner. I had actually, I had actually grown all of the fruit trees. Oh my days! Fruit trees all round here. I'd grown them all, and now it's decided to hack them all down, take all the leaves, and that means all the fruit's gone as well. I'm guessing. Oh my days, you cruel, cruel thing. Yep, it's sheared all the leaves off. Oh my days. I'm going to have to change that from shearing now, aren't I? Take that to no. Oh, okay. Well, that was going to be a ton of fruit, but I'm guessing that I'm going to get a ton of fruit anyway from it. Uh, let's, let's have a look in here. See how much fruit I ended up getting. Oh, the fruit all seems to have the same sort of thing anyway. Yeah, I've got that. Okay. Uh, list all fruit. No, nope. didn't gain me any fruit out of that lot. Okay. So I just lost all the seeds for all the fruit trees. Oh, dang. It may have been this one, actually. Uh, it's not sheer leaves. No. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, you can see what I was planning on doing. It just didn't quite work out the way I planned it. I didn't really like the way it turned out, but it kind of turned out organically. It Because I was growing them in kind of like alphabetical order, doing the top row in alphabetical order, then the next row in alphabetical order, and so on. It ended up being fairly random heights and different types of trees in different places and that. And now it seems like the whole thing is just getting cut down because it's too close to my farm, my wood farm. Oh my days. What can you do? Hey, what can you do? You not build it so close. That's what I can do. I can take out that third row this next time. You live and learn. Uh, but I've also done a bit of work on getting all the seeds as well. So all of Pam's Harvest Craft seeds. I've been into the uh, the little harvest mat trader mat thing and bought all of them. There's tons and tons of them. Lots of emeralds and there's uh, the trees themselves cost gold, so I bought all those gold uh, saplings for gold. So I'm not worried about buying them again. And then there were some other, yeah, some other saplings that cost diamonds, so I bought all them as well. So not really a costly affair, more time lost than anything else because I've just messed it all up by having it too close to the harvesters down here. But never mind, I got some wood out of it. And I know from experience now where not to put them. And I might be able to put them a little bit closer together as well. I wanted to mess around with some fruit pickers from MFR and see how they work. Um, so I might have to change the layout anyway. Because it didn't quite feel like I could fit the fruit pickers in the right places. But we'll see what we can do with that. Uh, yeah, so I've done some work to this area down here. I've got all of the Pam's Harvest Craft seeds in now. Uh, I haven't done the agricraft seeds yet. I was going to think about doing those in here. And I don't know if I want to do the ore part of agricraft. I don't think that's something I want to do here. I'll probably do that in a druid's tail. However, I can't do something in a druid's tail that I want to do here. And that is use applied energistics to make things happen here. So each one of those chests up there has an applied energistic storage bus attached. So those chests are where things actually get stored. Uh, I've got a Tesseract here, which is outputting power. Uh, it's receiving 
energy and items, okay? So the energy is coming from the big reactor um, in port 4 or bay 4, food farming. And that's being converted and it's being stored in this energy cell. And then that energy cell's providing power to this mini standalone system I've got going on in here at the minute. Basically, this is all just storage, but nothing, no functionality whatsoever yet. But I can do that in a bit. I can uh, change that around in a bit. I'm going to give it its own controller and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but items coming in through this Tesseract go into this sorting chest. Uh, it was just the only chest I had was an old sorting chest from refinery location. And I've got an import bus there dragging it in. And then storage buses going into those chests. Each one of these is uh, taking power from the big reactor to do food farming and also sending items to that tesseract down there so all four farms send items neatly down to there tesseracts do make the business work easily providing power and extracting items it also extracts the fluid as well so we end up with storage in these ready-made chests and i've also took the time while i was setting it all up to have these in exactly the order that they are planted in so if i want artichokes I know it's third row down, fourth one across, third row down, fourth one across, artichokes. There's the artichokes there. So I can find things easier than just seeing a load of, well, plants that aren't mature yet, growing plants, because the harvesters... Uh, I think the pack went through an update, because when I tested out harvesters at one point, they didn't work with AgriCraft. And then there was an update and I hadn't checked, but I spotted a comment that said they do work. And I checked them again and yes, they do work now. I'm pretty sure they didn't work at one time and that's why I wasn't using them to start off with. But now they do work. I've added them in and sorted all that out and given them power and all that kind of stuff. Same over here. This is the fruits garden. So I've got fruits and some spices and root vegetables over this side. And this one was the sort of green vegetable side of things, all your green vegetables here. And I've also got a few other odd ones down here, uh, which that, oh, it's that one took them down. That one, or one of these two on the end here, decided to harvest, oh, a tree, because that's where this stuff's come from. Maple syrup and jungle wood. Yeah, okay. What's it put there now? I've got a little chest down here as well, which is supposed to be storing all of this kind of stuff. Uh, it's got a walnut sapling, which I didn't get. It's picked up the oak saplings that I needed. Uh, and it's got a cinnamon sapling. The cinnamon sapling doesn't get harvested fruit-wise. You have to chop it down. The same as there's a paper tree somewhere as well. So this was the fruit that I was collecting just while I was setting things up. So I've got a bit of fruit. There's not really a lot of use for fruit. Uh, there's like one one or two common recipes which all fruit kind of make. Oh, now look, I'm going to have mobs as well. Okay. Dang it. Oh, my word. That's going to be great. Great fun. Come and get it. Come and get some. Come and get some. That's it. Come and get some. Come on, come on, come on. Now there's no trees. Wait. Whoa. Did you see that jump? That skeleton did a massive leap of something. Wow, I like, like that. That's awesome. Okay, and you... Die, die, die. <laughs> Running away from me. Get back here. Yeah, die. Okay, so that didn't... Yeah, even more disastrous than I originally thought. Thank you, MFR. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll light, quickly light these up and have another sleep. Just to get rid of the darkness before anything else happens. Uh, one tree survived. Hey, It was okay when there was trees on them. But then the night came and that was it. All over. Good in theory. Not so hot in practice. Never mind. Maybe next time. I'll do version 2. Version 2 will be better. Version 2 will be much better. It'll have to be. Because the version 1 didn't work. Okay, so it's a very fine morning. Let's have a look to see about handing that quest in. Yeah, there we go. That one. Ready. Get some potions of regen. Very nice. And that should be it. 91% complete. What? 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 what?
There's some stuff that I need to unlock yet then, is there? There was some stuff in learning to spot guy block. Oh, there's that sifting sand one. Sky farm. Oh, I've got that containing the herd and a few other little bits and pieces in there. Power grid though, I thought I'd done that. There must be something hidden in there somewhere. And then we've just got all of these. The bees and trees, I think Jaded Cat has changed this because some of these are uncollectible. Uh, but I haven't updated the pack because as soon as I tried to update the pack, I lost my ability to log into the, my world save. Breaks the world save. That's another one that's stuck. 91% complete. Dang it. Oh, well. Uh, so, yeah. I, I've been distracted by farming. And uh, possibly... Wow, look at all these. Possibly something due to having... Uh, having Magic Farm 3 set up and starting to think about how I was going to farm all those vegetables uh, and looking through the list and figuring out how many spaces I needed for a farm and things and from what I can tell there's about 60 Pam's Harvest Craft seeds and I've got 5 short there and I think that's like uh, something like soybeans, white mushrooms uh, oh, melon, carrot, and potato are the other ones that would be there. So 60, 60 products that I would have to farm. And so these little banks of 20 each, three banks sorted, fourth bank, what I'm going to use it for, I don't know. Maybe for the stocking up on things that I wanted multiples of. So, for instance, I'm a tea drinker. So maybe if I went and got the tea from wherever that is, I think it's down here somewhere. Can I get tea down here? Yeah, tea leaves there. That one there. Tea. If I got the tea seeds and planted a little row of four here, then I'd end up getting more tea in the system. Soya beans would be another good one. I did have that set up to soya beans before, and that gave me quite a lot. 44 soya beans when I harvested it. Oh, uh, actually, that is planted down there. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, having a harvesting area that's just there for quite large harvests. Uh, for things that I need lots of. Maybe spice leaves and things like that are pretty good. Uh, another thing that I wanted to do, though, was to bring a cow over here for milking. Bringing a cow for milking was something I considered. And I was considering putting it into this space here. So I could have something automatically uh, milking the cow for milk. So that I could make cheese and all that kind of stuff. So there's something, and also down below, I wanted to set up a little bit of applied energistics uh, auto crafting to do some things like that. But I wanted it the whole setup is self contained. So I'm going to do a bit of crafting, and I will be back to set things up. Okay, so I've got a few bits and pieces. Um. I'm not 100% sure exactly how I want to lay this out. So far, it's looking nice and neat. So far, I've got it looking neat. Uh, I've just added a controller here. So I've got access to more channels, uh, which don't necessarily end up attached. I guess they will end up attached, yes. Uh, and I've also extended out along here to put a wireless access terminal. So I've got a wireless terminal into the main system there. So I don't have to keep running all the way back every time. Or flying all the way back, whichever way you want. And uh, Now, the first process that I'm thinking of using is the presser. And I think that the presser is going to be a pretty important part for making uh, kind of essential bits from it all. So I'm going to, first of all, bring out a cable that I can then run things off down the center here and I reckon my soybeans will require require a lot actually uh, I think soybeans need two processes to make what you need to make where did I put them in there there we go let's take a few of those okay and link that up in a minute uh, and I may as well run that in the dead center here just straight along here somewhere. So let's have a presser here. Okay, and see. I don't think it needs any power. I think it just presses. Yeah, it doesn't need any actual power. So I wanted to see how we can get stuff in. We've got soy milk. That's good. 
uh, get stuff in and out of it. So let's have an export bus. This is experimental at the minute because I haven't tested tested this. So let's have an export bus and let's have it export soybeans. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's filling up soybeans nicely. That's good. Okay, so soybeans are going straight into there. That's good. All right, and then an import bus on the opposite side uh, should import it. Import the soy milk. Yeah. Okay. Import the soy milk. No. It's not importing soy milk. Can I... Can I tell it only import soy milk? And maybe it'll do it then? Mm, nope. It has stopped taking the soy beans out by the looks of it though. But it's not taking the soy milk. So, we've got to find another way of getting the soy milk out of there. Once it's done. This was what I was figuring. There was going to be some sort of issues with how these things interact with applied energistics. It's always the case. Every time you start messing around with something new in applied energistics, you're going to find problems along the way. Okay, so let's take it up a level higher. And let's have a hopper going down. I'll sort that where it goes to in a minute, but let's check that it works first. So if I put a soybean in there, it will process okay, yeah. But then when it makes soy milk, will it get hoppered out? Yes, it will. Okay, a hopper. So I know for a fact that I can get stuff out of a hopper with applied energistics. So that works now. So this will be an import bus on there. And we go back to the export bus onto there and tell it to export soybeans. Okay, so that should now continuously process soybeans and put them into the hopper. And then from the hopper, they'll get dragged out into the applied energistic system yeah that's good okay so we'll do the same sort of thing again i could i could actually change this up and have a capacity card to put the soy milk back in but if i want a lot of this stuff then i need to keep it processing right so we'll uh, just just deactivate that f that for a moment and check out what's in here Get the soy milk. Give me a soy milk. Give me a soy milk. Give me a soy milk. Give me just one soy milk. Process. Give me one soy milk. I want to put one soy milk back through. And then show you what I mean. Right? A soy milk. Okay, so that goes through again. And we can press soy milk into tofu. And the tofu can be used instead of meat products. Uh, silken tofu. And then there's something I've got to do with it after that. What's the uses of silken tofu? Got to put it through to make firm tofu. That's it. So, we've got this cycle over and over again to get this done. That needs to go through three times. So what I could do, what I could do is in increase the capacity of this by that much. So it does soybeans as one thing, soy milk, and then silken tofu. I could do it that way. But I want to try and do it with an interface so that I can program it. So when I want something, I can program it that way. Let's try interface here. Have we got oh, let's visit relay interface. Okay. So let's take this out of here. Pop, pop, and put an interface on it. I want it to be by command rather than because just because right i want it to be because of commands okay so uh i'm gonna need a piece of soybean i'm gonna need a soy milk then i'm gonna need a tofu and then a firm tofu so that i can get this all right oh yeah so i'm gonna have to do that twice all right so i'll be back once i've got one of everything and some recipes made up in patterns for applied energistics let's put that into there uh, and then I should be able to set it up so that when I request to tofu or soy milk or whatever the recipes rely on, because these have multiple uses. Firm to tofu have 65 pages of uses. Uh, soy milk only has one use. Okay. Uh, uses. 
These soybeans can be used to make salads and garden soups, but then everything can, I suppose. So that's not necessarily useful. What about the other tofu, actually? <laughs> um, silken tofu. Silken tofu have any other uses? No. Okay, okay, okay. Scrap that. I don't actually need soybeans for anything. I don't need tofu for anything else, so I can just put... It's straight up exporting all the time, so I end up with just a stock of firm tofu. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so we're going to put soybeans in there. We're going to put soy milk in there. And then we're going to put silken tofu in there. And we're going to get everything just processing through here as fast as you like. And then we're going to put an import bus on the side here. So it takes it all back into the system. And that is possibly all I need to do for the, the tofu side of things. So I can get tofu whenever I want, which is a very big product in the system. Uh, let's put these in the system like that. But right, that should now be processing tofu. Yeah, there we go. We've got the silken tofu going in because all the soy milk's being done. And then that should turn it all into the firm tofu. And then we've got mm, uses, tons of uses for tofu. It's always kind of a meat substitute though. So I have got meat coming in from somewhere else. But there's a few things that tofu just can be used for on their own. Like epic bacon. It's a bit weird, isn't it? All of these different colours and tofu make an epic bacon feast. Pretty awesome. Uh, and then just about every other meat substitute is tofu. So I don't need a lot of it, but it'll be nice to have it there when I want it. Uh, and as for oh, auto crafting processing setup down here. Well, now that is going to take some doing. It's going to take a lot of programming and a lot of sorting out. I think, uh, I think you've seen how you do auto crafting and applied energistics before. So I'm not going to go through showing you it all. I think I'm just going to try and set up some banks of machines down here. Maybe even all the way around this corner. I might have to do some sort of structure that comes all the way down this corner. So when I've got the fruit trees all set up again, I can start uh, harvesting fruit and processing in the processing plant. So what I want is I want to cr start creating a food processing laboratory thing down here. Uh, I'll throw a few little devices up here if I need them few churns and presses and stuff i think there's a pressing of something else that's needed as well uh let's put the presser down and see if we've got the recipe thing going on have we got a recipes anywhere recipe button no we don't okay so we'll 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 see what else we can do with those after if anything else comes out as needing a presser i've got a spare okay well that's already about what we've got time for this episode. Um, yeah, I've, I've had a tree disaster. I've planted a load of Pam's Harvest Craft. I'm getting an applied energistic system all set up and ready to make food on demand. And I'll probably still just eat burgers. Yes, just slurping down the burgers. But once I've got feasts, I'll probably just eat beef wellingtons and pizzas and things like that all the time it'd be nice to set it all up just once even if i never have to set it up again even if i never use applied energistics and pam's harvest craft to auto craft the foodstuffs ever again at least i'll have done it once i wanted to do it on utopia resurrection but never got round to it i can't do it in the druid's tale because we've got no applied energistics three I'll be doing lots of things with food and crops and things later on in the Druid's Tale series. Uh, but I figured I'd get this done quickly before I start moving into that territory and duplicating my content. And hopefully this is going to be very different because this is applied energistics being used to manipulate Pam's Harvest Craft and the recipes and stuff. Uh, but that is really it now. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next episode of Agrarian Skies 2.